Now, I, I don't know if you all remember, but uh, in the before times when a company like released a new product and you really liked it, you could just go out and um, buy it. It was, it was real weird. But uh, today, you know, things are much different. In a world where, you know, robots buy all the good gaming components, uh, what are, what are we supposed to do? This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Have you run out of things to watch lately? Well, good news, CuriosityStream is now available to stream on your smart TV. And if you use the code hardware and click the link in the description below, you can sign up for an entire year for just $14.99. CuriosityStream has thousands of streamable documentaries and nonfiction TV shows on topics like history, nature, science, food, technology, travel, and more. Featuring 35 collections of curated programs handpicked by our experts. Streaming to any device for viewing at any time, anywhere. Curiosity has it all. Award-winning exclusives and originals. So thank you again to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. Check the link in the description below and make sure to use the code HARDWARE to sign up for an entire year for $14.99. And trust me, I do feel your pain because I've been trying to build this HTPC VR build uh, for this basement here for quite a while. And although some parts I, I got coming, I, one thing I need is a GPU to replace the 2080 Ti in there that I want to use for the VR build, which is impossible to get. You, you probably know. Also, I need a CPU, which are just as hard to get. Uh, 11th gen Intel is right on the corner. I'd like to get one of those for the build to be current and make a good video, but you know, I don't even, they're not even out yet. And I assume that you won't even be able to get one either. So we, we screwed. What else can you do if you want a new gaming PC, but parts like new parts are out of the question? Well, you can always go buy uh, something used, but old is old. I mean, how old is too old is the question because I have an Alienware M14X that on the surface still kind of looks like a solid gaming laptop. It's not until you open it up that you notice that, well, this thing's from yesteryear. For example, this display that we're looking at here that's not on, it's kind of dirty. Uh, this is a 1366 by 768 display. Yes, this, this specific machine, the M14 XR1, back in the day, didn't even come with a 1080p option. The highest you could get was 1600 by 900. That was like HD back then. I guess it still is, I mean, that, that lower resolution might be okay. Uh, on a 14 inch. I mean, it does look decent, but it might actually help us in the future because what we're rocking in this bad boy isn't anything RTX. What we are gonna be working with is the NVIDIA GeForce GT 555M, built on the 40 nanometer process with a mere 1.17 trillion transistor and one gig of VRAM. As for the CPU, this old machine has the i7-2720QM, which is a Sandy Bridge processor. And Sandy Bridge was a really good processor back in the day. It's 32 nanometers, uh, base clock 2.2, boosting up to 3.3. Uh, I used a 4500, or, uh, 2500 for a long time uh, in an old PC I had. It worked, it worked good. It's still, well, it used to be the test bench until my old Azeroth motherboard broke, but the CPU itself, still trucking. For RAM, this does actually have 16 gigs of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz. Uh, it is upgraded from what it came with originally. Originally, it just came with like eight gigs. I also did upgrade the, the hard drive as well. Originally, it came with a 250 gigabyte, uh, 7200 RPM hard drive. It's now got an SSD because, I mean, especially a hard drive that old, it was slow to begin with, but then you throw that much age on it and the thing was a, it was a dog. Sometimes it didn't even boot up, it just kind of failed. <laughs> So yeah, on paper, gaming in 2021 on a thing that was built in 2012 isn't looking great. Uh, but it's actually easier to find something like this, this M14 XR1 from 2012. This one was actually built uh, December 24th, 2011. It's easier to find this machine if you wanted to go out and buy it than it is, say, a 3080 or a 3090 or a 5950X, pretty much anything. You might notice that this laptop isn't on. It's because well, just be, just know that if you buy a laptop this old, the chance that the battery is going to be any good at all, especially if it's the original one, is slim to none. And this one obviously doesn't work. It does not hold a charge to save its life. And if you're not plugged in, uh, you got about a good solid five minutes before it shuts itself off. Also, this cord is in a rough shape. Uh, I don't know what my buddy did to it, but it's it's struggling. Uh, if this was a laptop I used often, I would cover this up with at least some electro tape, but make sure you check out the charging cord on your used laptop. Make sure that it's not in the condition like this. You don't want to get yourself zappied. Anyway, we'll plug, this in. we'll plug it in so we can actually turn it on. This is the one that I 
uh, liquid metal almost three years ago. And I want to take it apart and look inside of it, but I first want to know, one, does it overheat again now? And two, can you game anything? So I think it'd be fun to start out on Cinebench R15 just to see what it scores compared to what we're used to. Okay, she's finally done. It looks like our max package temperature was 69, which is pretty good considering uh, we boosted up to 2.329, which is also not too shabby on all eight threads. Uh, what did we score? 373, kind of what we expected. So at least it's still working. Um, it's, it didn't crash, which is good. It didn't overheat, which is good. We'll keep that open just to monitor. Uh, so let's, let's try our first game. Like I said, we'll try something easy. We'll try Polybridge. Okay, menu screen. <laughs> 35, playable for sure. Oh yeah, solid 60 FPS, at least on the building menu. Things are, feel responsive. Yeah, no, no issues. Uh, animation, it drops a little bit, but definitely more than playable. You could, you could enjoy this game on a laptop from 2012. What about old World of Warcraft? The Shadowlands just came out. Uh... I mean, 30 FPS, I, I don't know what my settings are set at. Let's take a look. Graphic, 1366 by 758. Uh, everything's set very low. Let's, let's turn it all the way up, okay. Ooh, we're only at 10. We're getting, tw I mean, 20 frames per second. Is it usable in a game like this? But I, I have to think that any, if I get into anything that has more than one character involved and you start throwing a bunch of AOE spells, uh, you're not gonna be able to play much, so. You're gonna have to go with the recommended settings for this computer, which uh, World of Warcraft is saying is two. We're rocking about 15 FPS in the Minecraft. For a game like Minecraft, this is definitely usable. You could, you could have a good time. Now, Overwatch is probably where I imagine our first unusable is gonna come from. McCreezy, see what our settings are first of all. The video settings are, well, they're set to low. So let's see what low gets us. 40, I mean, this is okay, okay. This is not bad. Feels a little spongy. Like uh, our frame rate's decent, but there is some sort of input latency. I don't know if it's the screen's or response time, because I don't know what this display's response time is. I don't imagine it's superb. Uh, surprisingly, I'll go with usable. This is definitely a game I thought I thought I didn't think it would work. So now we're going all in. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, playing on a laptop from 2012. When I first started this game up, it just said, uh, yeah, your system does not meet the minimum system requirements for this game. You're gonna have issues. And I was like, ah, we're gonna go anyway. So now we're waiting on the world's largest update. And I have my Thrustmaster Warthog hooked up to this computer, which is the, probably the first time I've ever used a joystick that's worth more than the computer that I'm using it on. Two hours later. Okay, to start, I don't want to talk about how long that update process took, uh, but at the menu, well, here we are. We made it this far. Trying to click on stuff, not super responsive. Good news, I saw that the power adapter came unplugged, so now we got 10 FPS. Things are actually a little more responsive now. It's, it's, as, it's as good as it's gonna get. We're on low end, still not you know, the best experience, but if we can just, if we can fly, we can prove that this is, it is possible. Alrighty, here we go. Let's see if we can even load in. Oh, we have loaded in to our 152 at seven FPS. Uh, what's outside view? Speakers on this thing are absolute horrible. We're rocking a solid eight FPS, but we're moving. Oh boy, oh boy. Keep her on the center line there, Bob. Oh, look at that. We are flying in Flight Simulator 2020 on a laptop that came out, that was built in 2011. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, it's eight FPS, so it's, it's, it's garbage, but I mean, it is working. It's actually not too bad. I mean, it's a frame rate's horrible, but I once you're up in the air, it gets a little better. I don't know what, what my flat button is, so we'll just ignore that. We're going to try to do a landing. Oh, we're, we're dropping frames. Nope, nope, back to eight. Eight is as high as we've seen so far. We'll do an extended downwind just so we have some time to get ourselves situated. 
at our 8 FPS. I, feel, I think only one of these speakers is working. You can see the runway now. Okay, we're going to try our 180 turn, 180 degree turn. We'll get lined up. Not too bad. We got to get slowed down because we're going about a buck 50. Oh, yeah. Just, still carrying a reasonable amount of speed. It's not, it was actually a really good touchdown. But we are not slowing down. We successfully took off, flew a pattern, and landed. Honestly, I had, I had never thought that this thing would actually run Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, given that it was built in 2011, and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 destroys even like today's high-end desktop PCs. Yeah, it ran at 8 FPS at the lowest possible presets, but we were able to take off, fly an entire traffic pattern, and land without dying, so I think, uh, I think it was a victory. And even better, the temperatures were, were pretty decent. So the CPU, the highest temperatures we saw during that gameplay was 84 degrees Celsius, which isn't bad, giving this thing's age. Uh, and the GPU, the GPU's max temperature was 72 degrees. That's even better. So the liquid metal that I put on both the CPU and GPU die about three years ago now, still working, still working strong. Which makes me think, should we even mess, take, should we even mess with taking this thing apart? I mean, it's still working. But I guess it would be kind of interesting to see how the, the die has handled the, the liquid metal over the last three years. You, you let me know. Should we open this bad boy up and, and see how it looks? But should you buy one of these? Should you buy a laptop this old used today? I guess it really comes down to how much they are. Let's, let's, go, on, let's go on to our favorite site, old eBay, and see what people are selling M14XR1. Because I know how much I would pay for it for the experience that I had. I just had here today and let's find out well you can get a refurbished one from $750 don't do that that's ridiculous oh and eBay's and it's not much better on eBay so here's one on eBay M14X R1 14 inch only 8 gigs of RAM we have 16 uh, same processor the i7 2670 QM same size SSD they want $365 that's a crazy person nobody nobody should ever buy that uh, I got this one from a friend who upgraded his PC and he's like this thing isn't worth anything especially not $365. Do you want it to mess around with? And I was like, sure. And uh, if you could find one of these from a friend free, it's definitely worth picking it up for that low price of free. And you know, killing some time playing Polybridge or Minecraft, even World of Warcraft was halfway decent. Maybe I would pay 50 bucks for it if it had uh, an SSD in it and some the RAM updated to 16 gigs. Any higher than $50, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I had $50 worth of fun playing on this thing but that's about it but either way temperatures are still good liquid metal still doing its task and we were able to play one of the beastliest games out right now so it's been fun let me know what you guys think we should do with this thing next thank you guys for watching follow me on twitter uh follow me on twitch i will not be gaming on this on twitch but it's always been fun Till next time